Hello, hello everyone. Um, well, first, uh, it's really great to see a lot of new faces in the audience and also presenting. So, uh, how many of you uh, were here uh, in, in the last year? Okay, a lot of people, but also a lot of, uh, of new people. That's great. Okay, well, uh, this presentation is going to be about uh, kernel hardening and, um, or proactive security, as uh, people have been uh, calling this recently. And, well, uh, my name is Gustavo Silva. Uh, my work in the kernel community has always been supported by the Linux Foundation and uh, recently by Alpha Omega. So, yeah, thanks to those organizations for their support. And, well, uh, just a couple of words about me for uh, those who don't know me. Um, I've been working on kernel hardening for eight years, um, proactive security. I am part of the kernel self-protection project, which is um, the Linux kernel division of the Google Open Source Security team. And, well, this is the agenda for today. Um, we are going to start with some uh, basic um, concepts about flexible array members. And then we are going to move uh, to the main part of the presentation where we are going to be talking about this new compiler option that we want to, uh, to enable in mainline. And we are going to see why we want to enable it. Okay, so let's just go, uh, let's do a quick review of flexible array members. I'm going to, to get into a lot of technical details. This is the most basic one, so we are going to build on top of this. And uh, well, I'm going to be mentioning this uh, throughout the whole presentation. So, well, a flexible array member, when we, when we want to use a flexible array member, uh, one of the requirements of the, of the C language is that they should be the last member in the containing structure. So in this case, we have struct flex. Struct flex is a flexible structure merely because it contains a flexible array member. So we are going to be uh, referring to struct flex or to the, to the term of flexible array member throughout the whole presentation. So when I say that, uh, we just have to remember that it's a structure that contains a flexible array member. And well, ex an extended review of, uh, of flexible array members um, usually, when we use uh, a flexible array member, um, we also need to include another member in the flexible structure, which we are going to use uh, to store the total number of items or elements this flexible array member is going to contain at some point at runtime, right? So, so that's, that's useful information to, to have. Um, as part of the language, if we have a flexible structure, that may not be part of another structure. So this is what the language says. What the language says. And well, we have a new, uh, our new shiny um, compiler attribute, which is counted by. Um, I'm not going to get into the details of, uh, of this attribute. That's not the purpose of this presentation. Uh, but I, I wrote a blog post where you can take a look um, and, and you can learn how to use this, this attribute in any C code base, and in particular in the Linux kernel. So if you are curious about it, I just included a, a link in the presentation. So, okay, now this new compiler uh, option, uh, flex, dash w flex array member not at end, it was developed by, by Shin Tao. Uh, that's actually how, uh, how Shin says uh, we should pronounce her, her name, uh, Shin Cao. And well, it was developed by, by, by her in, um, back in, in 2023. And well, it was recently released in GCC 14. So basically, this compiler option, what it does is uh, the compiler, when we enable this compiler option, the compiler is going to complain if we have uh, a flexible structure, in this case, stroke flex, in the middle of a composite structure, right? So in this case, we have our flexible structure, which contains a flexible array member. And well, we have, uh, we just declare an object of the type of this structure in the middle of, uh, of stroke composite. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a warning. And well, 
what is wrong with, uh, with, with this kind of code construct? First, having a flexible structure in the middle of a composite structure is not actually part of the C language. This was added as an extension. Uh, in, well, in this scenario, we have, uh, we have that, well, the, the flexible structure can be either the last member in the composite structure or not the last member, which in this case, well, we have a, an object in the middle, right? So this last part of the extension is, uh, is deprecated now. So this is what we are trying to fix with, the, with this new compiler option. Now, the reason for this is, uh, well, there are a couple of reasons for this. One is that, well, compilers get confused about the sizes of uh, flexible array members when they are uh, in the middle of composite structures. So they cannot determine uh, exactly uh, how big uh, the, the flexible structure is when we try to determine the size, in this case, of the middle object. Uh, another reason uh, why we don't, uh, we don't want this kind of code construct in the kernel is because, well, one of the, one of the first um, uh, requisites, uh, prerequisites to use a flexible array member is that they should be at the end of the containing structure, right? They should be at the end of the flexible structure. So it really doesn't make sense that when it comes to, in this case, a composite structure, or a, a certain number of nested structures, now all of a sudden we can include a flexible structure anywhere in the middle of, uh, of this, this kind of code construct, right? So it really really doesn't, doesn't make sense. So that's what we want to, to fix. So before uh, we get into more details, I would like to go uh, through just quickly to uh, say the brief history of how it is that we got to this point where we have thousands of these warnings uh, in the Linux kernel. So this all started back in 2019 when um, we run into, into an issue. The problem that, that we discovered at the time was that there, there was this structure that contained a zero length array in the middle and that zero length array was being used as a flexible array member at runtime. So this is some heap space was being allocated for this array, and then, well, some, some data was being written into this array. The issue is that the following action adjacent member in the containing structure uh, was being corrupted, right? Was being overridden. And, well, that's a bug. We fixed that. And, well, that started all the effort of transforming uh, what at the time we call fake flexible arrays into flexible array members. So uh, fake flexible arrays are merely one element arrays or zero length arrays that people used to implement as a way to tell the compiler, well, you know, here I want to use a variable length object or a flexible array member. However, at the time, before C99, uh, we didn't really have a proper way to declare this object, so that's what we had, and that's what we, that, that, what we used, right? And then, well, of course, the, the kernel was polluted, and any other C code base are, are, out there is polluted with these uh, uh, fake flexible arrays. And well, at least when it comes to the, to the kernel, it has taken us uh, about five years to address this issue in the Linux kernel. It might well be the case that we still have like a, a couple stranders out there uh, under certain strange configuration, but uh, well, we are basically done with that with that work, right? Then uh, we run into the problem of um, ambiguous trailing arrays. What is an ambiguous? What, what is the problem with this uh, that we found back in the day? Well, we had this version of the 45 main copy that used as a workhorse. Um, it used building object size. The problem is that when we had a structure with a trailing array of any size, of a concrete size at compile time, this compiler, this building compiler function, when we asked the size of this object, uh, it just was saying, uh, I don't know, I don't know the size of this object. And that was really problematic because the, a, lot of, a lot of those trailing arrays they were really, they had a concrete size at compile time. So we, at the time, we really didn't understand why the compiler was doing this. 
why was the case where uh, it wasn't able to reason about the size of these objects when, when, when it was clearly evident that those objects can, uh, they, they had a size uh, at build time. So what happened at the time is that we, well, of course, we communicated with uh, compiler people. We wanted to know what was going on. And the main reason uh, is because, well, there were a lot of uh, code bases out there that they were using trailing arrays as flexible arrays, right? So they could declare a one element array or a zero length array or an array or 14 bytes. Uh, but at runtime, some people were actually using those arrays as variable length objects. So compiler people know this, how people were using, how developers were using these arrays. So they just decided not to mess with that. And uh, that, was the, that was the reason why these building compiler functions were, uh, were buggy. So, okay, uh, that problem is fixed. Uh, those uh, building compiler functions are, are, are correct now, are, and they, they function correctly now. And uh, compilers also implemented uh, a new compiler option, and dash f strict flex arrays. Uh, it was released in Clan 16 and, and, uh, and GCC 13. We enabled the strictest form of this compiler option in Linux 6.5. Basically, what this option does is that it helps us to eliminate that ambiguity of having multiple different ways of declaring a flexible array. So now that we have this option enabled in mainline, the only possible way that we have to declare a flexible array member is only if we use a C99 flexible array member. So with this, any other trailing array or any of any other concrete size uh, gains bounds checking through the 45 version of main copy, something that was not possible before, uh, before this, this compiler option was implemented. Then, in recent times, um, this new attribute, the, the counted by attribute, was implemented. Uh, it is out there in the, um, was released in Clang 18, and it is under development in, Clang, in GCC 15, so it is going to be released in, in the next version of, uh, of GCC. And well, basically, with, uh, with this compiler option, what we do is we, we annotate, uh, if we have a flexible array member, and we have uh, a counter member in the same structure, well, now we have a way to link the flexible array member with the counter member that is going to contain the total number of items of the flexible array member at runtime. So with this, uh, and, through, uh, and with the help of uh, building dynamic object size, now the compiler at runtime, um, it has a way to know how big this array will be, right? And with that, we can add bounce checking. Uh, on these on flexible array members, and well, the counted by annotations are uh, is work in progress. Uh, we have been looking for all the flexible array members in the kernel, um, which flexible structure contains this counter, and well, we are annotating that uh, that flexible array member. Again, as basically any hardening effort, any any proactive security is not that simple as just merely annotating the flexible array. We also need to synchronize how this counter is being updated and how the, uh, the flexible array member is being accessed. So, but anyways, I mean, as I said, I'm not going to get into more details. I wrote a blog post about this and, uh, well, it's, it's quite complete. You can, you can check it out. Okay, and well, finally, ideally, <laughs> any, any flexible structure um, should be that contains obviously a flexible array member should be annotated with counted by, but of course that's not always the case. And well, that's that's what we have. Okay, now let's get into more details about uh, this new compiler option. Uh, well, at the time when I when I started working on this, I built a kernel and well, I stumbled upon more than sixty thousand of these warnings. And uh, yeah, at uh, first was really frustrating because I really had no idea how to address this. And well, the thing is that um, only about 1% of those, of those total amount of warnings are unique issues. And well, that's, that's the good news. <laughs> but anyways, I mean, those are hundreds of, of, of issues to fix. So, well, then I started um, thinking about how to address this problem. And I was really getting very overwhelmed because 
First, I was trying to, uh, to figure this out in terms of moving the code around and refactoring the code so that any flexible array member or, or any flexible structure in the middle could be placed at the end of any number of nested structures, right? However, that, that, is, that, that is like a, a lot of work. I mean, I, I figured that I would have to probably become an expert at any driver to, to reaccommodate all the code. And probably there are other implications. Probably uh, the code ended up looking like that because of some uh, the design of some protocols. I mean, probably we cannot get rid of some of those cases, really. Anyways, I was, I was really uh, thinking about this issue and I started uh, taking a look uh, at some of these unique, uh, unique issues. And well, some patterns started to emerge. And well, I managed to classify uh, at least, to identify at least four categories of these issues. And we are about to see case by case. Okay, so in the first case, um, the first case is the, is the, is the most, the easy one. Uh, is when the flexible array member is not is not used at all. So, well, in this case, we have our flexible structure. This is real kernel code, and well, we have our flexible array member. Uh, what I noticed at the time was that this flexible this flexible array member was not being used at all in any in any part of the kernel. This means that no heap space was being allocated for uh, for the for this array. And there were no instances uh, of code trying to access this array. And well, we have our warning here. In this case, well, uh, we have an object, an object header is of the type of this flexible structure. And well, the compiler was complaining that we had this flexible array uh, not at the end, right? In this case, well, the fix is simple. I just remove those flexible array members, and that's it, right? We are done with that. Now, in the case, in number two, um, this is slightly different. In this case, we may use the other members in the flexible structure through or via the composite structure, but we never use the flexible array member. So what's the difference uh, with the other case? In this case, stroke flex, uh, there may be instances of code actually allocating a space for stroke flex and for the flexible array member and making use of it. But that never happens when it comes to a composite structure, right? In the case of, uh, uh, in this example, uh, the, only, uh, the only members that the composite structure uses uh, or access uh, are, in this case, A and B. So what can we do? In this case, can, what, how can we fix this issue? If we, if we need the other members in the flexible structure, but we cannot just simply get rid of the flexible array member because we know that it's being used in other parts of the kernel. One potential solution for this is, well, to have two separate structures. In this case, we have the original stroke flex with the flexible array member. And well, we are basically duplicating that flexible, that, that structure, but we are not including in the new structure the flexible array member. So in this case, the new structure is flex header, merely to illustrate that is, is the header part of the flexible structure, right? So with this, uh, if, if we implement this solution, we are effectively getting rid of the flexible array member in the middle, because now what we do is, well, we just change the type of uh, of the middle object from stroke flex to stroke flex header, right? And with that, the compiler uh, cannot see the flexible array member anymore, and we don't have warnings. And that's a magical solution, right? And life is beautiful, okay? However, what is the problem with this solution? Yeah, a question? Yeah.
I was wondering if that would cause aliasing issues and pointer provenance and that kind of thing. Yeah, that, I mean, the, the solution is not pretty, right? Yeah, we are about to see that, yeah. Um, good question. Yeah, so what's the problem with this solution? Well, first, we duplicate a lot of code, right? Uh, we are going to duplicate unnecessarily a lot of code. And well, because these structures are basically the same, are identical with the exception of the flexible array member. And well, you people that maintain this code, you would have to maintain two different structures. So that is prone to error, and we don't want that, right? That's a bad solution. So yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> However, I have, to, I have to tell you that, uh, at least in one, in one case, one maintainer, he decided to go with this solution. Uh, well, that's up to him. It's, it's fine. OK, so the solution that I figured uh, for these cases is to use um, the Struve group family of helpers. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with Struve group or they have used it? No one. OK, that, this is great because we are about to see how you can use it. OK, so let me go quickly uh, and explain you this to you. OK, this, this, uh, this helper is magical and is very versatile because we can, basically what, what I am doing here is with the help of this helper, with the help of this helper, oh my God. OK, I, I am creating a new, a new struct type. So in this case, flex header is a new struct type within our flexible structure. And if you notice here, we also have uh, HDR. HDR is going to be a new member or a new identifier for the whole group of, uh, of members, right? That we are enclosing with this helper. Okay, so if we, if, if we do this, now what we can do as we have a new, we have effectively a new type because this is a tag, this is a stroke tag. So we can use this as a new type. We can go and replace stroke flex now with stroke flex header. And with that, we avoid the case of the, of the duplicated code. And, uh, and the memory layout of the flexible structure remains exactly the same. OK, now let's get into the details about the group because it's an interesting helper. It was implemented by, by Case Cook. And uh, well, he's the, he's the leader of, uh, of this project, of the kernel self-protection project. And, also, and this was also implemented uh, with the help of, of Keith Packard, which is also a legend. And well, uh, Struve group is actually a family of helpers. We have different helpers. We have like a three different helpers. In this case, what I am using is Struve group tag because what I want to do is to create a new Struve tag to use it as a new type, right? To, to replace the, the type of the flexible structure. So the magic of Struve group is that we have a union. In the union, we have an anonymous structure and we also have a name structure. So with the help, thanks to the anonymous structure is that we can access the members in that group directly without necessarily having to use the name of the structure. So that, is, uh, that helps us a lot uh, because we are avoiding to a lot of code churn because otherwise it would be as just adding a new substructure in the middle of, of stroke flex. And if we want to access the members, we would have to go through the name of the, of the substructure first, right? And, uh, and yeah, that's not a beautiful solution. And well, this is avoided with, uh, with this uh, anonymous structure. And well, um, also, we create a, a name for the whole group. And that name has different advantages. And of course, we create a new tag. So we are effectively creating uh, a, new, a new type. Which is, the, which is what we are going to use. And through the name, we actually gain bounds checking on the whole group whenever we need it. Because now the compiler uh, has an identifier for the whole group. And if we happen to write data or to read from the whole group, uh, well, the 45 versions of main copy, uh, they are going to be able to, uh, to sanity check or to add bounds checking. Right. Every time we have, we want to access the whole group of members. So it, it has a lot of advantages. So that's what we, uh, in my case, that's what I am using. So that would be the solution for case number two. And this is uh, this is a, a kernel patch. In this case, I am using uh, uh, 
uh, underscore underscore through group. In this case, I'm using this helper because if you notice, the, the flexible structure is packed. So with this helper, we can, uh, we, can, we can have tags, we can have names, and we can also have attributes. So that's very useful. OK, so I did that. I am effectively uh, separating the flexible array member from the rest of the members in the, in the flexible structure. That's the new type. And then in the, in the composite structure, I'm just replacing the type of the flexible array of the, of the, flexi of the flexible structure with a newly created type, right? And with that, uh, the flexible array member is gone, and the compiler doesn't complain anymore. OK, now this is the, 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 the most fun part, let's say. OK, case number three is when we have implicit unions. So what is an implicit union in this case? OK, if you notice, we have our flexible structure. And um, we have our flexible array, array member. And in our composite structure, we have a fixed size array. And that fixed size array is of the same type, of the same element type of the flexible structure, right? So this means, this tells me that people know what they are doing because what I infer from this is that people at build time, they already know under certain circumstances and in some scenarios, they already know how, how big the flexible array member is going to be, right? So they, they don't have to allocate heap space for that. They upfront are just <laughs> are just based in a, 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 a fixed size array of, of the size they need. And then they have enough space to iterate from the flexible array member over <laughs> the fixed size array. So this is an implicit union. In the best, in the best scenario, this is an implicit union. Uh, and I, and I, say, I say this because I have actually found a couple of cases where people, they, they, they thought they knew what they were doing. Uh, they were expecting the, the flexible array and the fixed size array to share the memory, the same memory address. But in fact, due to the, due to the alignment of the composite structure, there, were, there was a huge hole of padding between those, <laughs> between those arrays. So is prone to error. Even, even when we uh, think that we know what we are doing all the time, well, in a lot of cases, it's, it's not the case, right? OK, so here I have a, 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 kernel, a kernel patch where, where I run into this situation. This is interesting because what we have here is this is our flexible structure. And the name of, uh, of the flexible array member is exactly the same. As the name of, as the as the fixed size array, right? And yeah, what I do is again, I use true group. I create a new uh, a new type, and I replace the type of uh, of the flexible structure with the newly created type. This effectively removes uh, leaves the flexible array member out of the game. The compiler no longer sees the flexible array member. And in these cases, if this, if this were uh, all the patch, the, 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 the warning would have, been, would, would have been fixed. However, that is not, um, this is not the full patch. In this case, what I notice is that in other places uh, in, in the code, people actually were trying to access the flexible, uh, the flexible array member. Right. So in case number two, uh, they, uh, the flexible array member was was not needed at all. Right. So just we could use true group and that's it. Right. But in this case, there were other instances of code where people was they were trying to to read data and to access the flexible array member. So that is um, that is a bit of a problem because we just changed the type of the conflicting object. So this means that uh, we actually we cannot access the flexible array member anymore. The flexible array member is gone. So what happens? What, what, what can we do in this case? So here I have a, an example of, of that. Of course, we have our composite structure. And here at the bottom, we have an object of the type of the composite structure. And if you notice here, 
Um, some copy was trying to read from the from the flexible array member. So this is the flexible array member. So we can no longer do this anymore because that flexible array member is not there. It's gone. So this this is a bit complicated. So the solution I uh, well we figured in this case is that we could use container of. We could do some tricks and we could use container of to access uh, that flexible array member if we manage to get the address of the flexible structure. And with that, with that address and with that pointer, we can access the flexible array member. So let's see how this works. OK, so first, in this case, uh, this is the, the, the other part of the patch. OK, so what I'm doing here is I'm using container of to get the address of the flexible uh, structure. And through that address, now I can access the flexible array member. So this is the flexible array member, right? So let's see more in detail how this works. OK, here we have, again, uh, our flexible our, our composite structure. Here we have uh, an object of the composite structure, and then through this object, we can get the address of uh, of, the, of of the of what was previously an object of the type of a flexible structure, and through which we could be we we were we could access the flexible array member, but that's not possible anymore. However, we can get its address, and now. In the in the flexible array in the, in the in the in the flexible structure, we create the new, the new struct type. But I, as I had previously said, we also create a new identifier, right, for the whole group. So in this case, this could be like a new member in the flexible structure. So this is the last piece <laughs> we needed to complete the puzzle and to actually manage to complete all the arguments we need to magically get a pointer to our flexible structure and access the flexible array member that we just left out when we changed the type of the conflicting object. So this might be a bit complex to understand and also to explain. But once we, we got it, it's, uh, it's clear. OK, I have a question here. Uh, we had. The similar problem, or well, the same problem, and found a different solution, which might be simpler. Uh, I assume that the hole that you mentioned is the difference between size of and offset of uh, of the thumb. The hole. The hole. The hole. Like the the problem in the union with the flexible array and the actual array. Oh, you mean the padding? The padding. Yeah, that's uh -huh. the difference between size of of the structure and the offset off of the farm, right? Yes. Uh, we we decided that we would add a dummy reserved uh, field so that there was no padding, and then both matched. So maybe you could add a compiler warning that would warn you whenever. Uh, a structure with a thumb has padding, which in the last in the last part, okay. which would solve the problem without all the complexity. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm going to address I'm going to address the issue of uh, of fixing these problems case by case. So what I'm trying to what I'm proposing here, or what I am implementing already, because uh, we already have a lot of patches in the kernel, is a general solution. And I'm going to get into more details of uh, why I, I am proposing a general solution. Yeah. Uh, I'm having a question. Since, as you are saying, uh, it's a form of implicit union between the digest from the inner struct and the digest of the outer one, yes. why not just use the outer one uh, from the, the même copy? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, that's a good question. And again, <sighs> Any of you, or probably all of you, might have uh, an idea for a particular case. This is just one case, right? Um, there are other cases where I don't have, we don't have a, a, an implicit union. We have any other random member. And in the code, uh, developers, let's assume that they, they know what they are doing, and they are actually uh, 
writing data, overriding those members in a controlled manner, let's say, right? Through the flexible array member. For that scenario, this solution also works, right? And um, at the end of the day, if you ask me, uh, ideally, what we want is to have these flexible array members at the end. We, we don't want them in the middle. They are, they are really problematic. You really, you really got to know what you are doing. And it's difficult to control because the code evolves, right? And if, we, and if we place them at the end, we don't have to worry about them, right? So, so yeah, what I am proposing here is a general solution. And, um, and yeah, again, ideally, uh, if you are a maintainer and you have this, this, this code construct in your code, and you can do something about it, and you can find a way to move your code around and do whatever you have to do, do it, right? I mean, there, there, uh, there, I, I also found one case where people, uh, networking people, I tried to, they, well, they were actually refactoring their, their code a little bit. They were in the process of uh, uh, refactoring their code. And there is this networking structure, net depth. It's like a 300 line structure. And, uh, and well, we were uh, going back and forth with the maintainers. And at some point, the, the maintainer said, well, you know, I, I don't want to group uh, grouping like a 300 members in this structure. I just don't want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to refactor my code. And I think it took them like uh, a month to refactor all the code. They did it, and that's fine. That's great. I mean, if you ask me, that's the best solution, right? But we have a lot of these issues, and each one of these issues is, is complex, right? So this is the general solution. OK, let's, let's continue. OK, so yeah, we can do magic with container off, and that's how I actually uh, managed to, to fix this, this warning. And well, there is uh, the, the commit ID. If you are curious, you can take a look. I probably may be <laughs> running out of time, but anyways, OK. OK, so yeah, that's, that's the magic. Let's continue. Uh, the case number four is quite similar to case number, number three. It's also an implicit union, but this, in this case, that, that is happening on stack. So that, that's a slightly different, and uh, we can actually use other, we have other helpers that we could use uh, on stack. So we don't necessarily have to use true group and, and, and container off. So yeah, what happens here is that, again, we have our flexible array member, and uh, people, they knew how big their flexible array member was going to be uh, uh, at runtime. So they, up front, they allocated 10 items for that flexible array on the stack, right? However, well, that, that's a warning. And well, we have our, our piece of, uh, this is real kernel code. And again, here we have our flexible array member. And well, they were allocating a couple of items. They just needed a couple of items for that flexible array. And well, for that, what we are using is define raw flex in this case. And there is another helper that I'm going to mention. And this helper was originally created uh, precisely to avoid having to allocate heap space when, 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 people, when people know exactly how, how big the array is going to be, right, uh, at build time. So yeah, under, under that scenario, there is no point on allocating heap space. So we can get away with creating a helper. Uh, it's, not, it's not the purpose of this presentation to get into the details of this helper. It's a bit complex. It has a union inside. Unions are magical, apparently. And, uh, but yeah, this is uh, what it does is, well, we have this is the type of our flexible structure. This is going to be a new object, which is going to be a pointer. And then we have our flexible array member, and well, our, uh, a number of items for the flexible array member, and that, that helper does all the magic. And well, yeah, through that newly created uh, pointer object, we can access the, 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 the members in the flexible structure, and this is the actual flexible array member. Okay, so there is another helper, declare and declare flex. That other helper is used when we have a flexible structure uh, 
that contains a flexible array member annotated with a counted by attribute. Because in this case, this helper can actually initialize the counter, right? And that's quite usable. So again, I have some, uh, some commit IDs. You can take a look uh, when, when the presentation is available. And well, you can see how, how this works. Well, conclusions. Well, I, uh, we have a, a simple three-step solution for the complex case. We have to use true group. With true group, we create a new, a new, uh, a new type. And well, we group together uh, the members um, in, this, in this new group. We isolate the flexible array member. The compiler is, no, no, is, not, is, not, be able, is not going to be able to see the, the flexible array member anymore. We are not going to have warnings. Then, well, we, we change the type of the flexible structure to this newly created type. And in the case that we need to access the flexible array member, we can use container of. And that's, that's the general solution. Again, ideally, the solution would be case by case. If you know your code and you can help us to place your flexible array members at the bottom, at the very bottom, that's the best possible solution, right? But it, I mean, you would need to, that, that's probably a, a, another project. I mean, really. And well, in the case of implicit unions on stack, we can use this couple of helpers. So, well, I, I think this is, uh, this is a clear strategy on how to address these thousands of thousands of warnings. And, uh, and well, I'm working, uh, I'm working on this. I already landed like uh, three dozen of, of these patches in mainline. And I managed to get from 650 to uh, basically a little bit more than 300 unique issues. And that accounts for like, uh, probably like 20,000 of warnings fixed with these strategies. And with that, thank you. So uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, all of these changes, so uh, I suppose you did uh, quite a lot of patching. Uh, did you do all of these by hand, or did you use something like Coxinel to help you speed things up a bit? Uh, no, in the case that, well, this, the warnings, as, you, as we already have a compiler option, uh, I can just take a look at the, at the warnings and just audit the code and fix it manually. So yeah, the answer is, no, I've been doing this manually. OK. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, in some cases, in, when when the compiler option is under development, uh, we we use Coxinel to, uh, to 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 start fixing those, or at least to start identifying the issues we are interested in before the compiler option is even is even out there. Right? Uh, yeah. And in some cases, uh, we we could uh, we could address part of the issue. Uh, also with the help of Coxinel, but there are a lot of situations in which we, we should actually take a look at the code. Yeah. You played rugby. Um, so no, uh, so I was just looking at my code, and I don't have any, uh, I don't have any, uh, uh, I can't, okay, I have lots of flexible arrays, but I couldn't find any that were actually within structures that I know of. I don't know, maybe I missed one. That's great. Okay, I don't know. You're I, a great developer. That, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm saying that I noticed that I don't have the counted by. So are okay. you doing work to add counted by, or should that be something that I should just go back and process? No, no, we, we are doing that. I mean, we, uh, and that's, yeah, that, that is something that we, we have been doing uh, little by little. Okay. So, yeah. That so we, take a look at my code, I'll, I'll take your patches. Yeah, thank you. No, I, I appreciate it. We appreciate it. There's yeah. A few, there's a few places that's a little confusing about how to use it, but I'll, we'll do Yeah, it. actually, I mean, if you take a look at, at, the, at the blog post I, I wrote a couple of months ago, that explains a lot of different uh, cases where, yeah, it can be confusing. Mm -hmm. And I explained that with, with real kernel patches. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, 
There are cases where I think that uh, readability and reviewability of the code is more important than compiler warnings. And while I understand that uh, it's important to shut down as many uh, warnings as possible, there are some examples that you showed, which for me are more error prone than the initial code. For example, container off is an implicit cast. You can easily make a mistake by uh, using the wrong type and it will work magically until uh, you have an issue. Also, changing the type uh, means that you might sometimes have to change the type of many arguments in a function because they will all use this type. And I suspect that uh, some of the latest examples, for example, for me, uh, I could not say if they were doing the same just by looking at the code while the initial one was more readable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I agree and disagree with you. Uh, I agree in the sense that it is great that you don't like this, because that is going to force you, as maintainer, to fix your code. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. And, well, the part that I, I disagree with is that, well, at least in the case of this, this compiler option, this actually, this work started uh, in, in the, last, um, the last year at Kernel Recipes, because I was actually, I was reviewing my slides, I was double checking my slides, and then I, um, out of curiosity, I was grabbing for this random stru uh, structure, and then I, I ran into, into a bug that was caused exactly because we had a flexible structure in the middle of a composite structure, and the following member after the flexible structure was a structure full of function pointers, which was being overridden. And I don't think that was intentional. And I fixed that, and, uh, and, and then I started looking for more of those, and I fixed like a, a, another couple of those issues. So it is important uh, to prevent this, this problem. Again, now the solution might be controversial. We can have like con controversial approaches. In the case of, of container of, this, social, this, this also triggered a conversation with that Camperton and, and, uh, and Greg at Plumbers. We are actually going to come up with, with new container of helpers. I'm actually working on, on container first, which is going to be a helper to, to give you the, the address of the container structure as long as you are using a pointer to the first member of, of the uh, yeah, to the first member of the container structure, right? Which in this case, that's what we need here. In the case of type safety, I mean, that's one of the reasons for container of. And actually, what is going to happen in the future, in the short future, and this is probably news to you, we are going to deprecate container of, and we just want to use uh, the, constant ver the constant version of, of container of to try to prevent a lot of, of those problems. But instead of all this complexity, uh, wouldn't it be uh, more efficient to work with the compiler developers and maybe uh, get an attribute to explicitly mark some of the structs that are, uh, or members of a struct that are known to be, uh, to contain a variable, uh, um, a flexible array member, for example, because it would make sense to say that in the outer struct, you reference the inner one, you put attribute uh, contains the fam, for example, mm -hmm. and uh, it would be sufficient to shut down the warning, maybe? Yeah, something like, uh, trust me, right? Trust me on this. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, um, that, that conversation all, all, always, always comes when, uh, when we are doing a lot of complex changes. And usually compiler people says, they say, okay, uh, I need you to tell me exactly why, why in the world this is actually necessary. Because again, in this, in this particular case, one of, the, uh, uh, one of the first things that we need to, to comply when it comes to using flexible array members, is that these arrays should be at the end of structures, right? Sorry? Excuse me? Uh, a question? Yeah, just a comment. Um, thank you for, for doing this work and making the kernel a better place. Uh, but of course, I want to take this opportunity to mention that if you... Um, want to prevent some of this, you could start writing the new code that you're contributing in Rust, and then this would never happen. Okay, I'm, 
I, I was pretty sure that someone was going to mention this, and I'm going to take this as, as an opportunity to, to tell you this. I totally agree, I, I like Rust, and uh, I, I like any other language that improves the security of any other code base out there in the world. However, due to the recent <laughs> heated debates between Rust people and, uh, and well, kernel maintainers, I would advise uh, Rust people to, to handle this carefully. Because one thing is the, is the programming language, and another thing is the people doing that work. So that, that is not the same. So let's not confuse the language with the people. Kernel development, kernel development is, um, is very social, right? We have to talk with maintainers. We have to convince people. We have to persuade people that we are doing uh, is actually useful for them. So we gotta be careful when it comes to, to, this, to these comments. Um, oh, let's, let's not confuse people, right? I mean, I understand, but, but, but um, this is, take, take it as a, as a good advice. Okay, so, yeah, well, if there is any other question. Okay. Thank you.